Hey, you want to represent income inequality of a country with a single line? You want to represent income inequality of a country with a single number? That's what we're talking about in this video. We're talking about the Lorenz curve, a way to represent income inequality of a country with a single line, and the Gini coefficient, a way to represent the income inequality of a country with a single number. That's what we're doing here. Here's the thing, guys. In 1905, Max Lorenz came up with the Lorenz curve, and people said, hey, that's a nifty way to represent the income inequality of a country. And here's basically what he did, okay? He said, look, I wanna represent the income inequality of a population, right? The income inequality uh, among the population of a country. So what he put is income on one axis and population on the other. What he put specifically is he put the cumulative percent of income on the vertical axis, the cumulative percent of income and the cumulative percent of the population on the other axis. Now, again, here at Econ Busters, we want students to really understand their axes, okay? So what is the task? We're trying to represent income inequality of a country with a single line, income amongst the population. So it should make sense that we have income on one axis and population on the other one, right? And what we're gonna be looking at is the cumulative percent of income and the cumulative percent of population. Now, one thing that's really important to understand about this axis right here is we're going from the poorest to the richest, okay? So I'm even gonna write that in. So poorest to the richest people, okay? So when we do something and maybe make something like a little mark right here that represents 25% of the population, we're talking about the 25 poorest percent of the population, okay? So that's what we mean by the 25% right there. But before I get into that too much, I want you to kind of understand what is the Lorenz curve. And the thing is, the black line right here, country X, that is a Lorenz curve. It's important for students to understand the country's line is called that country's Lorenz curve. In fact, in some ways, I didn't want to call it the Lorenz curve. I just want to say a Lorenz curve because there's a bunch of different Lorenz curves out there, right? Every country has their own Lorenz curve. This pink line is a reference line, okay? It's drawn, drawn at a 45 degree angle. This pink line drawn at a 45 degree angle represents perfect equality of a country. So let's first focus on that pink line. So let's go to the poorest 25% of a population, which we're going to find out they're actually not poor at all because I'm going to focus on the pink line, which represents perfect income inequality. Okay, so I take that 25%, I dash up to the pink line and then over to this axis and guess what I would find? I would find that to be 25%. So if that's drawn out of 45, that 25 is gonna give me 25 right there. So it means the poorest 25% of the population are earning 25% of the income. Oh, <laughs> they're not relatively poor at all, okay? And we could do that again right here at the 50%. That little pink arrow, if you can see it, is representing 50%. If I drew that straight up, hit that, uh, paint that reference line. It's not a Lorenz curve. Drew it over. I get 50% right there. And I'd say, oh, the poorest 50% of the country are earning 50% are earning of the income. Again, the pink line represents perfect equality. Now, again, a country has a Lorenz curve. A country has a Lorenz curve. So let's focus on a Lorenz curve. The black line represents a Lorenz curve. Let's focus on that 25%. What we can do here is we'll just draw that up to the black line and we draw this over. And I'm gonna say maybe that looks like about 9%. We're gonna say that. So 25% of the population, okay, the 25 poorest percent of the population are only earning 9% of the income, okay? That's what that would be reflecting. And then you could go out all the way to 50%, okay? And draw it up to the Lorenz curve, not the reference line, right? Just to the Lorenz curve, draw it over. Okay, I'm not sure what that looks like exactly, but let's call that 21%, the poorest 50% of a country are earning 21% of the income. That's how that works. Let me just tell you, um, and I tell this to students all the time, okay? If they're like, wait, do I put population or income? We you know here, what do I put here? Population or income? What do I put here? Population or income? What I say is just get the visual of this, okay? If you get the visual of this, right? Reference line, and then you're gonna have some line like this. It's only gonna make sense once you get a line like that, that income is gonna go here, 
and population is going to go here. And again, just to make that point uh, one more time, but it's so important that you realize that on the horizontal axis, we're going from the poorest people in the country to the richest people in the country. Okay. Now, of, country, of course, you could have another country. I'm not even going to draw it, but let's just say, you know, we had another country's curve that was like this right there. We'll call that country Y, if you will, right there. That means that country had more inequality, right? Well, how can we see that? We can say, hey, well, they're more bowed out. They are further from the perfect equality line. So being out here, they would have more inequality. And of course, maybe their curve would have passed something like this right there and there. So their 25 would have had less than nine. Their poorest 50% would have had less than 21%. That was just kind of like part of their curve is what I was trying to draw right there. So that is the Lorenz curve. It's very, very simple, guys. It's a way to depict income inequality of a country with a single line. Now let's get to the Gini coefficient, which is based off of this graph of the Lorenz curve. What we do here is we say, okay, A. A is the area between the Lorenz curve and the perfect equality line, and area B, which is between the Lorenz curve and basically the horizontal axis and the vertical axis on this side right here, right? This, this area right there. And the Gini coefficient, therefore, so Gini coefficient would equal A, area A over A plus B, all right? Area A over A plus B. Now, what does this mean? It means that the Gini coefficient, as that number gets larger, okay, what would that look like for this number to get larger? So this, if this line started to bow out more, that this A would get bigger, for that number to get bigger, we're getting more inequality. So, so important to understand, the higher the Gini coefficient, the more inequality. And also important to understand that, look, the most we could get is A to kind of like fill up this whole area, the perfect inequality, and we would get a number of one, right? We get a number of one, and if we have perfect equality, A would go to zero, right? This Lorenz curve would go right up that line of perfect equality. The A would go away. You would have zero over A plus B. You would have zero. So Gini coefficients are between zero and one. And the one would be perfect inequality, okay? <laughs> it means that the, all the income is going to one person in the population, zero perfect equality, okay? So again, the larger the number, the more inequality of a country. Pretty simple concepts, guys, for really cool ways to represent income inequality, a really simple way to represent income inequality of a country with a single line or a single number. Single line, Lorenz curve, single number, the Gini coefficient. Gini coefficient uses the Lorenz curve to find it. That's it. That's all there was to it. <laughs> See you in the next video.